Every season, I like to test my soil. It's kind of like a health checkup. You want to know how your soil's doing if you need to make any kind of adjustments for the next year. Now, ideally, I like to test my soil in the fall because if I have an issue with the pH range in my area, my soil tends to be a little bit more acidic, I have time over the winter to correct that pH imbalance. I'm also able to see ahead of time what nutrients I might want to think about adding back into the soil before planting time. But sometimes in the spring, I may decide that I really want to know the health of my soil and I don't have time to send off the soil to a soil testing lab. Now in my state, in Arkansas, we're really fortunate to be able to get our soil tested for free. And so I'm able to do that in the fall all the time, but in the spring it can get a little bit slower just because more people do it. And if I want to know right away if I need to add a certain nutrient to my soil, sometimes it's hard to do that and wait that long. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to test my soil using the Cooperative Extension Service, which I have really enjoyed over the years, but I'm also going to compare that test to a couple of different tests that I've been able to find on the market. That way, if in the spring I want to do a quick test, I'll be able to do that and I'll know if it's going to be accurate or not. Here are the two tests that I bought that I'm going to compare the results to to the soil testing done by the Extension Service. First, I'm going to test the Rapid Test Soil Test Kit. And this tests for pH, which is a huge thing, and then also nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash, which these are your big three that NPK. The other test that I'm going to be using is this little probe here, and this measures the moisture and the pH and the light. And specifically, I'm gonna be looking at the pH. I wanna see if the pH that this shows in my garden bed is the same as what I get with the extension service. In my test today, I'm going to be testing the soil from my raised bed. I'm also gonna be testing two other areas of my garden that will have different crops. You can see here, I've got a good amount and that is the a part of what I will take to the extension service and I'll also use a little bit of a sample with the home test that I showed you before but I am going to go to different parts of this raised bed and do the same thing that way I have several samples from this particular raised bed and then also in the garden plots that I do I will do the same thing with different bags and then I'll make sure and label them accordingly. I've already done the pH test using this tester and now I'm going to do the same test with the rapid test. Yeah. And I'm using the exact same sample. So this particular bag and this dirt is going to go to the extension service. So I'm using the same soil here in here. So I'll be able to compare them when I get the results back. Welcome back. I just got my soil test analysis back from my cooperative extension service. I'm very blessed to live in a state where they still do these for free. So I think it took about almost two weeks to get this mailed to me, but not a problem in the fall. I really wasn't in any kind of hurry, but when I got it in my mailbox, I was so excited. I couldn't wait to, to get the results. So what I'm going to do is compare the results to my soil test from my cooperative extension to the test that I just did on this probe and the rapid test home soil test. Now the probe only measured pH level, but the rapid test measured some other levels we're going to compare as well. Now, if you remember, I took several soil samples from each site. I put it all in a bag, and then that's what I used for both the rapid test and to send it off to the extension service. But right before I did that, I probed that same soil. So hopefully we're looking at the same samples from all three. And here's what we found on the pH. For the raised bed, the pH of the probe showed an average from all the different samples that I took of 7.1, which really was surprising to me because I've never had a high pH on any of my soil. But the rapid test showed a 6.0. And then I'm able to compare that to my extension service test and it showed a value of 6.1. So in particular, this bed the rapid test was pretty much on the mark, whereas the probe was a little high. 
but that result and that comparison didn't carry over on the other beds. For my new bed, the probe showed an average of 6.1 and the rapid test showed a 5.5. The extension service test showed a 6.1. So the probe was 100% accurate, gave exact same results as the extension test on this new bed, whereas the rapid test showed quite a bit more acidic soil than what both of these tests showed. And then we see similar um, results here with the old bed. I have on my probe, I had a 6.3. On the rapid test, I had a 5.5. And on the extension service test, it was a 6.3. So again, right on the money with the probe here, but a little bit more acidic here. What that tells me as far as an application standpoint is that I feel like in general I can trust this, especially when it comes to my beds. And honestly, it's so easy just to put it in the ground and then you just see the dial where your pH is and that's a lot easier than going through all the steps on the rapid test when it comes to pH. Now, we also tested the uh, different the, the main three elements that you're going to be uh, looking at with your garden the nitrogen the potassium and the phosphorus also known as the NPK the extension service does not test for nitrogen and the reason for that is that nitrogen levels are fluid in your garden not literally fluid but as in there they don't stay the same throughout the year or depending on what you have in your garden or if the garden is fallow so it's just not really an accurate way to test nitrogen at this level. So I'm just going to kind of throw that out even though um, both or my rapid test showed I need nitrogen. I figured that's pretty much a given that we need nitrogen anyway in our soil. But it did give me levels of phosphorus and potassium. So first, for what the rapid test showed for phosphorus on all three of my beds was that I don't have any phosphorus in my garden. I guess my uh, crops depleted that this year and it was about as low as you can go. So it showed that I had no phosphorus and the extension service test corroborated that. It showed that I was below optimum on phosphorus and that is something I'll definitely need to add in my garden, start adding in the fall to some extent, but definitely add at planting time too, um, especially for the root crops who definitely need phosphorus. The next one that we tested was the potassium. Now the potassium level was something that the rapid test showed that I actually had more of. It showed them in each of those beds I had either adequate or sufficient levels of potassium. But my extension service um, results showed that I was below optimum in potassium as well. It showed below optimum in both phosphorus and potassium. So I'm not really sure why there was such a difference between those two tests, but it sounds like potassium is something that I'm going to amend as well. So overall, I'm very pleased with the results and I look forward to continuing to use my cooperative extension service, especially in the fall, and also to utilize these other methods as needed throughout the season. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more videos and check out more gardening information, especially for beginning gardeners at journeywithjill.net and on my podcast at the Beginner's Garden Podcast. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.